I'm sorry, y'all. I almost said the wrong thing. And Elder Riley almost started walking in circles. I almost said the wrong thing. Just stay with me. But Abraham never stopped believing. How do you know that? Because he never stopped acting on it. Tell your neighbor again, this is real. I'm going somewhere. You think you thought your business was going under? No, it may be going, getting ready to go through a transition. But if God gave it to you, it's real. You think you don't have the money to finish school? No, you may have to transfer to another school. But if God told you, he's going to make sure that you get, you don't think you're going to pass that course? Oh, yes, you will. You may not pass it with an A, but just get out of it. I told y'all before, I'm going to tell you again, you're trying to be summa cum laude and magna cum laude. You better learn how to be thank you, laude, and get up off that. (laughs) I'll never forget that time. I'm almost done. Y'all give me a little while longer. Tell somebody else this is real. I never, never, never will forget that time. I got that D in algebra. I got that D in algebra. So glad to get that D. I knew mama was going to be mad. I knew it, but I didn't care. I got out. And I knew she'd get over it. Because I was not supposed to be a mathematician. I don't need to know a whole lot of trigonometry and calculus and, all, and quantum physics in order to tell you about G. Because the call was already on my life. I just didn't know it. So Abraham, he messed up. He operated in fear, but he never stopped believing. Mm. People who believe aggressively act upon what they believe. If a person tells you something and there is no real aggressive actions behind what they said, more times than not, it's because they didn't mean it when they said it, they lied to you, or they didn't believe it. Because when you believe God has said something and you call yourself a believer, if you got any sense at all, you better act upon it. Abraham believed God. Everybody don't believe God. Now, I got to go through this. Y'all stop for a minute because you need to understand some things. When you believe God, there will always be a challenge with it. There will always be action behind it. Now listen to this very carefully. If you don't get nothing else I've said, when God says, if you don't hear nothing else I've said today, listen to this. Sometimes it may seem as if you have failed, but keep standing. What was that when you're up? I told my son, when you're up against a struggle, meet it squarely face to face. Lift your head. Set your, plant your feet. Lift your chin and take a brace. If the worst is bound to happen, in spite of all that you may do, running from it will not save you. See it through. Dark may be the clouds about you and your future may seem grim, but don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself in fighting trim. Head high, eyes straight to the finish. Don't give up whatever you do. You may fall, but fall still fighting see it through and Abraham was seeing it through how do you know when God has spoken how do you know when God has spoken well number one it settles in your spirit 
but you have to be able to distinguish between your spirit and your feelings. How, Pastor Ron, do I do that? Usually, when it's your feelings, it keeps you in your comfort zone. When it's your feelings, it makes you look and feel good. When it's your feeling, it's usually birthed from and surrounded by dishonesty, deception, and lies. When it's your feelings, you want the credit for it. That's why folk in church, most folk in church who work in church settings shouldn't be working. Because they always want the credit. If you don't call their name as a problem, if you don't recognize what they do as a problem, if you don't agree with what they're doing as a problem, it's always a problem, always an attitude, because it's what they want to do. It may not be what God wanted them to do. It got quiet all over the church right there. But when it is God, the only thing you're concerned about is God getting the glory. Matter of fact, somebody lift your hand in here and say, God, get the glory. glory. I'm almost done right here. Tell three more people, this is for real. real. Now, when it is God, you got to move out like Abraham did. You got to change. When it's God, you're not in charge. See, most of our depression comes from the fact of when we find out we're not in charge. We used to have money and then we don't have no money and all we freaking out because we're not in control no more. That's where God wants you. God knew in order for Abraham to do what he told him to do, he had to call him out of his comfort zone. Call him out. And then in the due process of time, Somebody say at that point in time. (laughs) See if I can find my church again. Shake somebody's hand vigorously and say at the appointed time. (laughs) I just I just had a thought. You know, I got so angry at my son, Christian, as much as I love him when he didn't graduate on my time schedule. But he's getting ready to graduate, and I believe it's the appointed time. Are you following me, somebody? You see, God has a way. Abraham wanted to rush it. My God, the promise came a long time ago. He wanted to rush it. He was tired. He thought he was going to dry up and not be able to make a baby. You see, that's what he was afraid of. But God had told him he's going to keep him lubricated because God wanted him to have this baby. so sick of some of y'all, I don't know what to do. No matter what I say, y'all get Like the songwriter said, if you don't know me by now. <laughs> I love you, saints. I'm done with it. I just want to talk to you. I've been preaching hard all week. At the right time, watch this. The baby was born. Now, now, if I was to go further, and I don't want to go further, I don't have time, I would tell you about what Ishmael and his mother did after the baby was born. But but I'll have time for that, Maybe, maybe Wednesday. When the baby was born, Isaac, they named him Isaac because Sarah said, the Lord has made me laugh. I didn't think I'd ever have a baby. I didn't think I would ever have a miracle. I didn't think I would ever have a promise. But in my old age, the Lord has made me laugh. And everybody that hears about this is going to laugh with me. And then the scripture says, after the child was winged. 
able to walk on his own. Abraham had a dinner. This is where I want to go. Child wasn't grown. Child was still falling. Child was still uh, probably asking for goat's milk. The child didn't have the strength he would have in a few years. A little, small, two-year-old son. But it was then that Abraham said, I got to have a party. I'm not going to wait till he's 18. I'm not going to wait for the sweet 16th birthday. I'm going to have a party now. I got to invite everybody. I'm going to even invite the devil. I'm going to invite everybody that didn't believe God. Everybody that told me Sarah wasn't going to have no baby. Everybody that told me I was too old. I'm going to invite them all. I'm going to invite the ones who stood with me. I'm going to invite them all. You know what? And when they get here, even if I have to do it by myself, I'm going to shout. Because I got the victory. Hallelujah. The victory isn't grown yet, but I got it. Did y'all hear me? The victory isn't mature yet, but I got it. The victory may still be stumbling and crawling and falling down, but I got the victory. So the scripture says that Abraham called for a feast. I'm asking you today, Mount Zion, this first Sunday of 2011, grab your neighbor's hand and say, it's time to celebrate. celebrate. Now, wait a minute. If we go back, we'll see that after Abraham got the promise, after he got the word, Elder Tanisha, Elder Patrick, everywhere he went, God would give him another victory, and he set up an altar. I got to praise you here. And I, I don't want to forget this place because this is where you gave me a victory. He went on a little further, and he, he had another battle or another fight, and God gave him victory then, and he set up another altar. Everywhere he went, he set up an altar to remember what God has done. But when the baby was born, and was weaned, Abraham had a celebration. I'm done. I'm going to see what you do with it. But grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, if you understood anything pastor said, celebrate. If God has said it, don't you dare give up. Don't give up. I'm done. Thank you so much for listening. But for the benefit of our newer members, I testify for two more minutes. I remember when I wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die. And God called me to this ministry. And I saw the vision of this ministry. And with every door slammed in my face, every time I got cussed out, every time I got laughed at, that just made me stronger. Every time there was an article on the plane dealer, every time these mayors came together and fought me, that just made me stronger. And precious ones, you are sitting and standing today in a promise that gives God glory. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Jesus saved.